Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our session on AI for teachers. Um, I'm interested in finding out before we start uh, what your current uh, knowledge about AI is. So maybe let's, in fact, not so much your knowledge, but your usage of AI. So on a scale of one to 10, with 10, you're an expert user. You really know your way around. And one, you've never used uh, you've never used AI before or artificial intelligence or any of the artificial intelligence applications. Where would you place yourself? If you give yourself a 10, you say you are an expert. You you use it like every day, you know your way around artificial intelligence. You can speak with authority about it. And uh, one, you've never used it. So two, the devil, you know, five, yeah, I've done a few things. So I see Arthur responded with a one. Please type in the chat. Uh, Arthur, with a one. Thank you for your response, Arthur. Uh, let's hear some others. Some are still joining the session. Uh, John gave one. Okay, thank you for your honesty. <coughs> Great. Uh, Tabitha said one. Uh, okay, may I ask you to mute your microphones or let me mute, mute them from here? Right. Okay, so yeah. Uh, I think it's Jolimbe says six. Wow, okay. So Jalimbe, there might not be uh, much you will gain because I had assumed I'm speaking to, to beginners uh, today. So, uh, but I see uh, a number of people we have spoken are actual beginners. Cecil said one. Uh, Maggie saying there's no sound. Uh, so I don't think Maggie can even hear me. Uh, I typed in the chat that if there's no sound, it's possibly a matter of connectivity. And what one might need to do is maybe reconnect to the internet or restart your gadget or something like that. So Cecil gave it a one. Let me make, wait for a few more people to respond. Just type a number in the chat. Let us know on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is an expert user of AI and one is a complete complete novice or someone who has not even used it. Uh, give yourself a number there. This will help me to see how best I can adapt this session to meet you at your point of need. Lucy gave, uh, gave us a one, okay? We'll wait a minute or so and get a few more responses from people. Remember, we say if it's 10, you are an expert. If it's one, you are a complete beginner or you have not even used AI at all. Right. Uh, let me see. Some of you might might not have, uh, might find it difficult to access the chat in Zoom. So if you're finding it difficult to access the chat in Zoom, you can type in the WhatsApp group uh, because we have that WhatsApp group, AI for teachers. You can type in that WhatsApp group if you're not able to type in chat. Uh, and then I see somebody's raising their hand. Daniel, please go ahead, unmute and talk to us. Daniel, unmute and, and talk to us. <coughs> Daniel, your hand is up. Daniel Amolo, if you're speaking, your microphone is muted. Please speak to you. Yes, go ahead, Daniel. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, just dial an uh, uh, emoji uh, for, for one. Oh, but okay. meanwhile, I'm, I'm one. Your one, okay. Thanks, Daniel. You can mute your microphone now. Thank you so much. And do you know how to lower your hand? Your hand is still raised. <laughs> yeah. All right, no problem. Dr. Sam Marigati, thank, thanks to see you that you're online. Thank you so much. And thanks for facilitating this. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you here. I noticed you also put a one. Great. So let's begin. We are speaking here to people who are at an elementary level. And I have pitched this session around that. I will present, but feel free whilst I'm presenting to raise your hand if you want to ask a question or to type your question in the chat, and then we will take it up from there. All right, let me share my screen and then uh, we'll move on with the, with the presentation. Right, I've just shared my screen. Can you see it? Uh, you can indicate with a thumbs up, or you can type yes in the chat, or you can type yes in WhatsApp. Any of those will do. I'm just uh, checking if you can see uh, my screen that I've just shared. Okay, Sam said yes. Uh, DRCC Nalolo says yes, yes, yes. Great. People can see it. That is fantastic. So let's move on. Uh, this is AI for teachers. It's an introductory session to artificial intelligence for teachers. And uh, I've done this, but let's skip that. Who am I? I think most of you might not know who I am. So let me start uh, by just uh, 
introducing myself. Just a moment. I seem to have lost my screen there. Right. Okay. So um, my name is Joanna Mungoshi. I am a management consultant and also a master trainer for the British Council. I've been training people in education since about 2009. So that gives it like how many years? Maybe about 13, 14 years I've been in the business, particularly of training teachers and school leaders. I, I am a master trainer for the British Council flagship program called Connecting Classrooms. Uh, and um, I've continued with the other programs. There's a program called LL4GE, et cetera. I have two decades of full-time coaching, training, and management consultancy. I previously served as the head of IT and David Executive Director in market for marketing and sales at CBZ. And as I've said, I'm a British Council master trainer. I'm also a UNESCO master trainer for their online training for teachers. I've designed curriculum and facilitated digital literacy training for over 5,000 school teachers and school leaders and college <laughs> lecturers in multiple countries, especially du during the COVID times when it was not possible for people to meet face to face. I was an inaugural winner of the British Council Bout of Sin Award for demonstrating impact through innovation, creativity, and dynamic training in 2020. In 2020. And I was the third best public speaker in the world in 2002. Uh, that's for Toastmasters. I've consulted and trained in Zimbabwe, South Africa, USA, UK, Sudan, Ethiopia, Bangladesh, Mauritius, Kenya, Egypt, and other countries. As I speak to you right now, I'm in a hotel in uh, Zambia, in Lusaka, Zambia, but I'm from Zimbabwe. I've been conducting training here, and I'm returning home tomorrow, Friday. Right, so that's the bit about me, in case you're wondering who I am. I have uh, introduced myself. This is the agenda for our session today. One, we'll talk about rationale and objectives. Rationale, why talk about AI? Why is AI relevant to teachers or to education in general? We'll talk a little bit about background. How has the world progressed to be where we are today with AI? Where have we come from? What is the background? We'll talk about essential concepts. So there's terminology and essential concepts that is commonly associated with AI and if you are going to understand AI, there is a minimum level of uh, appreciation of these essential concepts that you need to have. So that will be covered under essential concepts. And then the bulk of the time we will spend on number four and number five, generative AI. We'll talk a little bit on what is generative AI, because since about December, November, December 2022, there's been a radical shift in the world that was brought about by uh, the introduction of chat gpt and chat gpt is a generative ai program in fact a leading generative ai program we'll then look at practical examples and with practical examples what i would like let me mute there's a colleague whose microphone is open and their phone is ringing i've just muted them so practical examples what i would want is for you to do what i'll be demonstrating i want you to try it out on your own because I believe you don't know something unless you're doing it. Just because you've heard about it doesn't mean you know it. Only when you can do it can we say with confidence that you know it. So please don't say to me, I know that already. I've heard about it. No, you can only say to me, I know that already because I have done it or I am doing it. That's why number five is about practical examples. We would like, I will demonstrate and then I'll take time. I'll ask you to do, to perform certain tasks on your own, on your gadget, whilst we are connected. So that by the time we leave this session, you are confident that you have actually tried it and you are now at least a novice or a first time user of the technology we're talking about. We'll also then talk about potential pitfalls for anything that has got advantages. There are also disadvantages, pros and cons. And then we'll have a Q and A session where you can ask me some questions. We might have a quiz. Mm, I will see, depending on the progress we'll have made. And then I will send you a link to evaluate this presentation. Right, I hope you're happy. If you're happy, please type yes in the chat right now. If you can hear me and you're happy and you're raring to go and you're ready for us to move on, please type yes in the chat or why. Yes, Cecil, you are the first one. Uh, Ndonga, John, uh, Sam, Arthur, uh, who else, Gladys, uh, Tabita, uh, Ma Maggie, is it Maggie? Um, yeah, let's, let's see the Sam again. Are there more? Is there more than one Sam? <laughs> and Hezron and Dam Rose and Steve and Florence. Wow, 
I appreciate the fact that you are all engaged. It makes the, 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 the session appear to be face to face, even though it's virtual. Ralph, thank you as well. So let me move on. Let's quickly cover the basics before we get to the meat. Right. Why are we talking AI and why are we talking AI for teachers? If you do any research at all, you will find that there is a growing body of experts who are amazed at the changes, the rapid changes that are happening. So we are undergoing a revolution. In fact, one uh, authority on this matter is saying this is almost like the industrial revolution and we are right at the beginning. The changes that are predicted or that are projected to happen, the impact of AI is, 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 is being projected to be maybe the most, the greatest impact of any technological change that has happened in our lifetime. Right. Let me just pause. Anetti, you raised your hand. Was that by mistake or do you want to say something? Anetti, if you want to say something, please go ahead, ask your question. I'll be happy to answer it or you want to contribute something. All right. Maybe Anetti had raised the hand uh, by, by mistake because it's been lowered. So moving on. Using artificial intelligence can improve learning outcomes. It is an advantage to you as a teacher and to our students to use artificial, advantage, artificial intelligence. And this you can research. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about it that when they tap into this technology and use it productively and use it in an ethical manner, they will be better off than students who are not using it. Number three of the rationale is that it improves efficiency and effectiveness across the board. I was on radio the other time on a radio station in Zimbabwe on a session uh, where I'd been invited and they told me, you can speak about anything. And I spoke about AI for entrepreneurs. And within 30 minutes, I demonstrated how entrepreneurs in their businesses can cut costs, can generate revenue in a very short space of time using artificial intelligence, partic particularly generative artificial intelligence. Lastly, number four, we want to prepare our students for the future, not for the past. And the future is definitely AI. There is just no going back. We, we have to prepare them for a world in which AI will be playing a prominent role. If we ourselves as educationists do not know, do not have any mastery over this technology, we disadvantage our students significantly. So those are the four main reasons why we are talking AI. One is that it's revolutionary and it's going to create significant impact. And therefore, if we don't want to get left behind, we have to know it. Number two, it will improve learning outcomes. Number three, it improves, improves efficiency and effectiveness across the board. And number four, it's for career preparation for our students because they will be living in this world. So our objectives today are number one, to understand artificial intelligence basics, foundational. I'm not going in deep. I'm not dazzling you with technological terms. We're keeping it simple. We are making sure that we are removing barriers that might you know, give you technophobia. Some of us are called PBBC, born before computers. So we are just understanding the basics. We are also learning about AI tools. We'll look at some basic tools that you can start using right away. We'll familiarize you with these AI tools. So I'll demonstrate how to use these tools right here, right now, and we are recording this. And then I would like you to think about adaptation plan. How can you adapt these tools so that you start using them right now. Like I said, the only time when you can tell me you know something and you convince me is when you can use it. If you're not using it, you don't know it. You're as good as somebody who's ignorant. Right, let move, let's move on. That takes care of the rationale and the objectives. I hope you're clear on why we are talking AI. And I hope you're also clear on what the objectives are and what to expect from the session. So moving on. Uh, a bit of background. I'll take just a minute on this. The birth of AI goes back to the 1950s. It is not such a recent phenomenon. And uh, I would say from the onset, when uh, computers were beginning to assume prominence in the world of business, uh, AI uh, was talked about. And even uh, early then in the 1950s and the 1960s, 
there were experiments that were carried out and there were early breakthroughs uh, in, the, in the 1960s to 1970s. And then 1980s to 1990s saw the rise and fall of what were called expert systems. So the expert systems were sort of like artificial intelligence. I haven't defined artificial intelligence in simple terms. Artificial intelligence refers to the ability of a machine, particularly a machine that uses digital technology to conduct tasks that are predominantly associated with human beings. Where a computer can do something that you would ordinarily say, wow, that's supposed to be done by a human being. Or maybe it does it and you don't know, you can't even tell, was this done by a computer or a human being? So artificial intelligence falls into the realm where machines are now doing things that require the logic or the skill that is predominantly human. So in the 2000s, we started to see machine learning. But what was happening is that most of the artificial intelligence was not generalized artificial intelligence. It was specialized. So if it was artificial intelligence, say, in manufacturing, you'd find that they had robots that could do what are normally associated with human tasks and do them with greater precision. But this was specialized to a specific sector, specific area, as in the auto industry. So you'll find it has been happening uh, since the 90s and then into the 2000s. But recently, from about 2016, 2017, there was a real shift where there was now generalized artificial intelligence, where we have got machines that are intelligent and this intelligence can be applied to almost any area that you can think of. It's not just limited uh, to a specific sector, as in uh, the kind of specificity we had before. So right now, particularly from about 2016 thereabouts, there's been a lot of development in what is called deep learning, and it unleashed what we can only call uh, the AI boom, artificial intelligence boom. All right, don't worry about history. I just wanted to have some background, but it's not anything you need to memorize uh, or, or keep in mind, but it is of interest and I thought I'd just share that. Right, let's move on to the meat now. Definition of artificial intelligence, I've already covered that. Uh, artificial intelligence refers to the ability of a machine to do tasks, to perform tasks that would ordinarily require human intelligence or a human being to operate. And hence it's, it's intelligent, and uh, but that intelligence is artificial because it is programmed, it's created. Generative AI, this is key. Listen carefully, take notes on this because that's what we're gonna be dealing with. Generative artificial intelligence refers to a branch of artificial intelligence that generates content. Are we together? So you say to it, write a book for me, it writes a book. And when you read that book, you can't tell that it has been written by a machine. You ask it to generate a, a test for your students. It generates a test. You ask it to, to analyze, let's say, a book and write a summary. It writes a summary for you. That's generative AI. And that, my friends, is what has taken the world by storm right now. Machine learning uh, is the ability of certain computer algorithms or programs to learn. So. When you're writing programs or, or systems that will lead to generative AI, you need machine learning. Machine learning is code or algorithms that don't perform a specific task other than learning. So the machine learns to learn. Um, moving on to LLM, large language models. When we talk of generative artificial intelligence, these programs that can generate content valid content that makes sense that you will struggle to distinguish between something generated by a human being and something generated by a machine. In order for them to do that, they are trained. And they are trained by taking a lot of data. So they use what are called large language models. Like taking, imagine all the data that is there on the internet and then crunching this data and then summarizing it and then categorizing it and classifying it and coming to a point where you know that when someone is constructing a sentence and they say, I am, you look at the various permutations and combinations and you say the most likely term to follow is this one. Hmm. 
And then the most likely, and that comes from processing an incredible amount of data. So that's what large language models do. They take an incredible amount of data, they process it, they categorize it, they classify it, and as a result, they learn as they go, and they are now able to use the learning that they have managed to perform in order for them to generate uh, useful information for us. Right. Natural language processing refers to the ability of these, particularly these generative AI models, to work with natural language. When I started uh, programming in the 1980s, we used to do programming in in high-level languages, such as BASIC, such as Pascal, such as C, et cetera. And it's code. So you have to learn the code. You have to learn to speak the language. But we are saying with natural language processing, we have reached the stage of advancement in this software where it will understand a statement in English. And if it was programmed for Swahili, it will understand, interpret, and act on a statement in Swahili. Or in, in Chichewa, I'm, I'm here in in uh, Zambia or in Nyanja or in Bemba or in Tonga, right? So those are just terms that I felt you needed to know. Artificial intelligence, the ability of machines to perform tasks that are ordinarily associated with human beings requiring human intelligence. Generative AI, artificial intelligence or systems, artificial intelligence systems that are able to generate content. They can generate a picture. They can generate a video. They can You can ask it to write a poem for you and it writes a poem and spits it out, okay? So it, it can generate content. Machine learning, the ability of the machine to learn and from its learning to then be able to produce the kind of output that we want it to produce. Large language models, these are models of software that are able to crunch huge quantities of data. And as a result of that, they learn from that, they classify the data, they categorize it, and they're able to predict the next word that can come in a sentence, and you can carry out a conversation with it as if you're talking to a human being. Natural language process, the ability of machines to work, to respond to natural language the way we speak, right? Okay, that takes care of all the theory. I really wanna to get to the practical, but one more thing. Generative AI is a branch of artificial intelligence that involves training models to learn from existing data and generate new content. So the content that is generated could be images, that is a picture, could be music, could be text. These models use learned patterns and statistical distributions to create original and creative samples that resemble the training data. So yes, as you can see from that last bit of that sentence, it has got limitations based on how it was trained. That's important, note it down. Generative AI has limitations due to the way it was trained. So if you train it on data that has got bias, it means the results you will get when it generates content will have bias. So that is something to look out for. And uh, maybe I'll give you an example later on of one of the biases that was picked up. Right, so having said that, let's now get to it. Let's see practically what can this thing do? We will start with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is by far uh, the most popular, and it was really the first big generative AI uh, machine to, to, to come into existence or, or software system. So what I will do right now is I'll stop sharing this screen I've been sharing, and I will share my browser so that we can go to ChatGPT and you'll be able to see for yourself what it can do. And once we've done that, I will ask you to then try it out on your own, right? I hope you've got a deal. Are you still connected? If you're still connected, please just type C in the chat for connected so that I know I'm not speaking to myself. <laughs> please type C, the letter C. Yes, Tabitha, I see you are there. Uh, Damrose, thank you so much. Uh, who else is there? Arthur, right, right. Yeah, that's fantastic. No? Great, great, great. I love this. Okay, so let me share uh, my browser and then we will we will move on. Just give me a moment. Let me copy the, the link for chat GPT and then I will paste it in my browser. And once I've done that, I will share my screen and you'll be able to see for yourself what this thing can do. All right. Right. 
Uh, let me go to screen share, screen share, and I will share this. No, no, not that. I will share, uh, where is it? I want to share my, yeah, yeah, that's it. I'll share that. Right. I hope you can all see my browser. This is, this is, uh, this is Chrome. So in Chrome, I will now type the address for chat GPT. In fact, I could just do this. I could just say chat GPT and uh, my search engine looks for it. And we are there at chat GPT and I can just click on it, chat GPT, right? And there you are, that's the screen. And it says, how can I help you today? So as I said, this is generative AI. Let me start by asking you, what do you want AI to generate? I told you what it can generate. For now, we're concentrated on generating text. What would you like me to ask it to generate? Does anybody have any suggestion? You can unmute and speak, or you can type in the chat. What do you want me to generate before I go and use my own examples? Anything, no answer is silly. I want to, let's engage it. What do you want chat GP to generate? I've told you it can generate text, essays, compositions, write-ups, you name it. Give me something you want to generate. You are too shy. Okay. Uh, let me let me just put a sad poem, right? Right, somebody said generate a sad poem, right? Let me write exactly that. Write a sad poem. Enter. So I've just written that, write a said poem. So here is what it wrote. In the shadows, I know, in, in fact, let me wait, wait for it to finish. What I'll do is I will copy what it is, it has typed and paste it in our WhatsApp group so you can all see it. In fact, I'll post it both in the WhatsApp group as well as in the uh, WhatsApp group as well as in the um in, in the in the chat. So let me start with the chat. I'm posting it in the chat so you can all see it. Right. Your message is too long. No, it won't take it in the chat. Let me post it in the WhatsApp group. Just give me a moment. Uh, I'm looking for AI for teachers. Uh, I've got too many things on my screen now. Control V. Right. I've just posted it in WhatsApp. Can you access your WhatsApp? Are you seeing it? Um, okay. I've got colleagues from Zambia as well. So let me post it in their WhatsApp group because they are not in the AI for teachers WhatsApp group. So for my colleague from Zambia, if you're in, that's the poem we have just generated. Uh, what was the prompt? The prompt was write a said poem. So let me read it to you uh, in case maybe some of you are not, are not able to see it. Just give me a moment. Let me go back to my browser. Right. It says, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I want to go to chat GPT. Right. So in shadows deep where sorrows weaves, a haunting melody of grief conceives. A symphony of tears in silent streams, lost in the echoes of shattered dreams, a broken heart, a heavy sigh, whispers of pain beneath the sky, clouds of darkness obscure the light. As joy retreats into the endless night, lonely footsteps in the cold rain, echoes of love now drowned in pain. Each teardrop falls, a tale untold in the book of sadness, its pages unfold. My, 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 what a, <laughs> what, what? <laughs> what, 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 a, what, a, what a poem, right? So let me pick something else. Uh, Techno says a nice love letter. So let me do that. We say write a nice love letter. Okay. It's writing the love letter. I will once again copy it and paste it. Uh, and the, the prompt I use is just write a nice love letter. That's all I say, okay? So let's copy this, copy, and I'll paste it once again uh, in WhatsApp so that you can all see it. Uh, let's see, AI for teachers, I'm pasting it here. Uh, come on, yeah, yeah, it's pasted. For a moment there, I thought it was giving me grief. Right, and I also post it. I don't know how many of my Zambian colleagues have connected. I also post it in the group, in the WhatsApp group uh, for my Zambian colleagues. Is this, yeah, I'm in the right place, Zambia, LL4GE Zambia. 
So here is the letter. I'll just read part of it. My dearest, and then name, you replace that. As I sit down to pen this letter, my heart swells with a warmth that only your love can ignite. Words seem inadequate to express the depth of my feelings, but I'll attempt to capture the essence of what you mean to me. From the moment our paths intertwined, life took on new hues, and each day became a canvas painted with the colors of joy, laughter, and an indescribable connection. Your presence in my life is a gift, a treasure that I hold dearer with each passing heartbeat. Your smile, like the sun breaking through the clouds, has the power to brighten even the darkest days. Your laughter is a melody that plays in my heart, bringing, to, bringing harmony to the symphony of our shared moments. In your embrace, I find solace. And in your eyes, I discover a world where love knows no bounds. So, <laughs> right, as you can see, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's incredible uh, what this thing can do. But what we really need to do, good people, is to now focus on education. So I would like you to share with me prompts that are related to education. Can you give me a prompt that you want us to try, which has something to do with education? Right. Oh, yes, somebody's connected from Zambia. I can see you there. Yeah, excellent, excellent. I can see a couple of my colleagues, ah, three actually, who are connected from Zambia. Wonderful. So give me, type in the chat, what prompt, that statement you put to tell chat GPT or to tell generative AI what you want to generate is called a prompt. Give me a prompt that you want us to try. I'm waiting. Something related to education. Are you Remember getting me? AI for teachers. Yes, go ahead. No, you were saying? No, no. Yes. No, no, you getting me? Yes. Yeah. I can hear you. Maybe we can. Okay, me, I usually use it, but I just want for the sake of others, maybe uh, what makes an effective teacher? Ah, fantastic. Great. Mm. I will I will go ahead and type that right now. Right. What make an effective eater? Question mark. Right. Let's see what Mr. Chat GPT will bring for us. Let me read as it types. An effective teacher. Ah, it's going too fast. It's going too fast. I can't keep up. An effective teacher possesses a combination of skills, qualities, and strategies that contribute to creating a positive and impactful learning environment. Here are some key elements that make a teacher effective. One, passion for teaching, and it explains a genuine love for the subject matter, and a passion for imparting knowledge can inspire students and foster enthusiasm for learning. Two, communication skills, and then it explains. Three, adaptability and it gives a brief explanation for organizational skills, and it gives a brief explanation, patience and empathy, and it gives a brief explanation, knowledge of subject matter, it gives a brief explanation, classroom management, innovative teaching methods, assessment and feedback, continuous learning, building relationships, encouraging critical thinking. So there, it gives us, gave us 12 attributes of an effective teacher. Now, let me see if I can give you a chat, uh, sorry, a prompt, that um, maybe is uh, uh, even more practical uh, for, for, for teaching purposes. Just give me a moment. Let me see if I can extract something here for you. Um, right. So it depends. You'll have to see. Uh, this thing is made in America. So it uses the American education system. So the chat, uh, the, the prompt that I'm going to use says, Create a set of practice problems for third grade students learning beginner algebra. You get it. Let me let me post it in the in the chat so you can all see it. No, I've got so many windows open now. Where is my chat screen? Oh yeah, here it is. All right. So this is the prompt. It's called a prompt. This is the prompt I am putting. Uh, I'm, I've just typed it in our chat. Create a set of practice problems. Uh, for third grade students learning beginner algebra. In fact, let me also type this. Let me share this in WhatsApp. Right. Uh, that's the prompt I'm going to use, and you'll see what it's going to generate. Let me also share this with my Zambian friends. Right. Uh, over here, let's paste it. Right. So I go back to ChatGPT, and I type in the prompt. I'd already typed this in. All I need to do now 
is just to press enter. Right. So here is what it is type. Sure, here are some beginner algebra practice problems suitable for third grade students. Simple equation, solve for the unknown. X plus seven is equal to 12. 15 minus X is equal to eight. Number patterns, identify the pattern and find the missing number. Four, seven, 10, dash 16. Uh, balancing equations, make the equations true by filling in the blanks. Six plus dash is equal to 10. Uh, 14 minus dash is equal to seven. So it's got the whole uh, test there or ex practice questions there. What I'll do is once again, I'm going to paste this in the WhatsApp group and you can you can see for yourselves, right? Uh, I'm pasting it, not forgetting my Zambian colleagues, my friends, I will not forget you, right? So I've just pasted it, you can have a look at it. So this is just one of uh, the tools that are out there. Uh, there are other tools that also do the same. At the moment, ChatGPT rules the roost, but uh, I don't know what it will be like tomorrow because new tools are coming up and there is, I mean, really hot competition. Everybody wants to, uh, to get on board. So I noticed some of you, okay, let me just take one more. Right, right. This is a prompt that somebody typed here. How a 21st century teacher should teach effectively. So I'm going to try that prompt back in chat GPT. I'll try that. And then after this, uh, I'll just share a couple more tools so you can see. Right. So it says the, the prompt was how a 21st century teacher should teach effectively. And chat GPT says teaching effectively in the 21st century involves adapting to the changing educational landscape, incorporating technology, and addressing the diverse needs of students. Here are key principles for a 21st century teacher. One, teaching integration. Utilize educational technology tools to enhance lessons and engage students. Two, incorporate multimedia resources. That's part of technology uh, integration. Number two, student-centered learning. Fosters an environment where students actively participate in their learning. Three, differentiated instructions. Four, global perspective. Five, life skills emphasis. Six, project-based learning. Seven, continuous learning. Eight, adaptability. Nine, digital literacy. 10, assessment for learning. 11, collaboration. And 12, cultural competence. So once again, I'm going to paste this uh, in, your, in your WhatsApp, uh, right, for both uh, the Kenyan team and, and, and the Zambian team as well. So what I want you to do right now is to try, no, before you try it out for yourself, let me just show you there are other tools as well uh, that, that you can use. Uh, in Zimbabwe, we don't have chat GPT. I think it's because of sanctions or some such thing. So we use others. One of my favorites is Paul, right? So Paul.com uh, brings together a number of different generative AI tools, right? And you can actually choose and you can compare and contrast. So all these, these assistant there's GPT 3.5 table, there's Cloud Instant, there's Llama, there's ChatGPT, there's Gemini, there's Cloud Instant. There is, I mean, you name it, uh, it's there. So I, I like this because for some prompts, I find that some tools are better than others. So by comparing and contrasting, I know when I'm working on something like this, maybe this tool is better. When I'm working on something like that, maybe that tool is better. So Paul.com is one of those that I that I really like and, and I, I enjoy using. Another tool that is uh, also quite powerful is uh, Bing, B-I-N-G. Uh, Bing is the Microsoft equivalent of Google Chrome. And uh, what uh, Microsoft has now done is it has incorporated uh, chat GPT into Bing. So when you go to Bing, you can go to bing.com. Oh, let me share that screen. I think I'm sharing a screen with my uh, Google Chrome um, Google Chrome uh, browser. I need to share the one with uh, Edge because Edge, Edge is the Microsoft browser, uh, which uh, has been, uh, they, they've actually incorporated uh, the Microsoft AI into that browser. So here we are. I went to Bing, Bing, okay, 
And then it gave me that. I just clicked on Bing and went to Bing. And I go here where it says chat. I can click on chat. And you notice where it says co-pilot. So I can ask it anything here. So I can say uh, brief, let me say brief history of uh, the independence of East African countries. Yeah, let me see if it'll give me that. That's interesting. I've never asked for something like this before. Brief history of the independence of East African countries. So let's see what it will generate. Now, the good thing about this co-pilot is it is academically honest in that it will give you references of where it found the text. So you can then click on the links that it gives you, etc. So it starts by saying East Africa is a region of Africa that comprises several countries, including Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan. The history of East Africa has been divided into its prehistory, the major polities flourishing, the colonial period, and the post-colonial period in which the current nations were formed. Most of the East African countries gained their independence from European colonial powers in the 1960s. Here's a brief timeline of the independence of East African countries. Burundi, July the 1st, 1962. Rwanda, July the 1st, 1962. Uganda, October 9, 1962. Kenya, December 12, 1963. My Kenyan friends, is that accurate? <laughs> Tanzania, December 9, 1961. South Sudan, July 9, 2011. I hope this helps. I could even say something like, tell me more. Tell me more. Let's see if it will generate more. Certainly, here are some additional details about the independence of East African countries. And then he talks about Kenya, the, Ma the Mau Mau uprising, which lasted from 1952 to 1960, played a significant role in Kenya's independence. It talks a little bit about South Sudan, etc. So I can go deeper on this. And it also gives me links that I can click to in order to get more information. So having done that, I just want you to do one thing for me. Okay, firstly, let me share in the chat and in the WhatsApp group a link to access, let's say, chat GPT, since it's the main one uh, that we looked at. And then I would like you to use that link to go and visit these sites for yourself, right? I want you to do, try out a prompt on your own right now. I know some of us have got technophobia. Trust me, the computer will not explode because you have typed the wrong thing, right? So don't be afraid. There's absolutely no need to be afraid. Just type a chat uh, of your own. Uh, I'm copying this into the chat here in, uh, just type a prompt, sorry, not a chat. I've just copied it in the in the Zoom chat. I'm copying it into WhatsApp for both uh, groups, the Kenyan team, as well as the Zambian team. All I want is for you to go and try it on your own right now in the next five minutes. So once you have tried it and it has worked, I would like you to type done, D-O-N-E. Just type done in the chat. I'm giving you five minutes to do this before we conclude the session. I would like you to try it on your own. I've pasted the link in the WhatsApp group for the Kenyan team, in the WhatsApp group for the Zambian team, and also in our chat here in Zoom. Go to, to open a, oh my word, there might be a challenge. I should have anticipated this. The challenge is that it might take a bit longer than five minutes because you need to create an account. So maybe let's just use one that doesn't require an account. You can use poe.com, P-O-E.com. If I'm not mistaken, it doesn't require a, uh, an account. You don't have to create an account. Because if you create an account, it will now want your email address. It will send an email address. It will need to confirm it. I have overlooked that. That wasn't very smart of me. So right now, in the WhatsApp group, I have just put another link. I've put poe.com. I hope that works. Let's see. If I click poe.com, what happens? Yeah, it goes to poe. So you can try poe. Poe.com, P-O-E dot C-O-M. Let me type it in the in the chat here in um, in Zoom as well. So P-O-E dot com. Go to your browser, type it, and then give it a prompt. Any prompt you want and see what it generates. You can say, write this, or you can ask it a question and then see what it generates. And once that's done, I want you to type done in the chat. Oh, two people have already got it. Andrew. Well done. And uh, Lona, that's fantastic. Well done. 
right? And John says he did it with chat GPT for that man. Well done, John. You're the man. Right. Let's see. What else are we getting? What else are we getting? Right. Um, Dan, that's MK Licando. Right. Daniel, Dan. Oh, my word. We are moving. We are breaking new ground here. That's fantastic. So really, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't experiment with this and start using it right now. Why choose to get left behind? So there's a lot more we could go into as far as AI is concerned. But as a starting point, since I was really speaking to people who are at the level of beginners, it's just to familiarize yourself with generative AI, with tools such as ChatGPT, such as Paul, such as the Bing.com um, uh, 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 and, uh, and Microsoft, uh, and, and make sure that you are, you're using these things. There, there's so much that we can do. But for today, I just wanted to give you uh, a quick overview. So in closing, let me go back to my PowerPoint presentation. There are a few other things uh, I need to cover before you get too carried away. Because as we said, for everything that has got a pro, there is a con. So you need to watch out for certain risks, uh, certain uh, dangers that lurk within uh, this world of AI. So I'll cover a few of them right now. Let me just share my screen and then we'll take it up from there. Right, I hope you can all see my screen. Since you could see it before, I assume you can still see it. So I've put here a number of other tools like paw.com, bing.com, pi.ai. Pi is quite interesting. It's, it's, it's like a conversational one. So you can go and have a conversation. I'm bored, uh, I'm feeling frustrated, or suggest something, and, and it converses with you. Perplexity uh, is one of the first ones to provide uh, uh, links and, and references to where it gets the data. So it's, it's um, maybe we could say it's, it's uh, academically honest. And then Magic School has got like 60 tools that you can use. And most of them are free. Some of them are, are premium and you have to pay for them. But moving on, here are the potential pitfalls, the potential danger. One is you can actually get answers that are biased from AI. How does this happen? It depends on the data. So for example, it was realized that when you were using generative AI for generating pictures, we can go into that another day. But for today, we're just looking at generating text. There's someone that when you were typing with most of these tools, picture of a doctor, nine out of 10 times, it would give you the picture of a man, not a woman. Why? Because the majority of pictures of doctors online are male. So it is biased. And in that way, the AI is actually perpetuating that bias. So it's important for you to be mindful. When you get something generated by AI, you still need to read through it because they just might be that wrong. Number two, there are copyright issues. Whilst AI generates original content, remember what we said, large language model. It has crunched a lot of data and it is only generating based on the patterns that have emerged from all this data that it has crunched. And there have been cases right now, there are cases before the law, in the US where content creators are up in arms against some of the companies that have these generative AI programs said, no, there was copyright infringement. You took, you, took my, uh, you took content from me without acknowledging, without paying me. So be mindful of the copyright issues. And one way to stay safe is to use those tools such as ChatGPT is doing now. Uh, and, and also, I, I think Copilot, the one that works with, uh, I, I mentioned with Bing, and, and perplexity that mention the sources. What, you're better off with those that mention the sources because even though it's generating so-called original content, it's based on being trained by using a lot of data. Ethical use. Now, when you produce something and you then pass it as your own original work, that is unethical. Even if there's no copyright infringement, the mere fact that you are claiming this is your original work when it's not, there's an ethical issue here. So we need to be mindful of that. Cheating by students. So this is a real danger. And we'll need to talk about some of the tools that you can use to check whether or not uh, students are cheating. I know most of you say, oh, most of my students just write their work. Trust me, within the next three to five years, most of your students will be submitting work that is typed or written. As you know, with technology, the, the, the consistent trend is that it gets more powerful and cheaper. It gets more powerful and cheaper. 
The first time I used an iPhone was 20, 2010. When I took out an iPhone, was, let me see, let me see. Wow, this is an iPhone. Because it was considered, you know, a tool for the reach, etc. But today, every single one of you is using a smartphone. The technology has gotten more powerful and cheaper. So never even think about today when you think about your students. The biggest mistake you can make is, oh, we are from a poor country. The kids don't have these things. Trust me, you need to look at the future, not the past. Give me two years and you'll see what the statistics are. In Zimbabwe right now, we have more cell phones than people. Our cell phone penetration is more than 100%. And yet, we're actually a country whose fortunes have been going down in terms of the wealth of the country. Right. So cheating by students is a real issue. And the sooner you know as a teacher, the more prepared you will be. Lastly, number five, we have got what are called unknown ramifications. This is uncharted territory. The world has never seen anything like this before. And where is it going to take us? We don't know. Maybe it will expose us to greater risk. Maybe it won't. But like any technology that has been introduced in the world, there is always the danger. However, none of the technology that has been invented so far has destroyed the world because we're still alive. So I, I tend to say get informed, learn about it, rather than responding in, a, in an emotional, fearful way or, or just you know assuming everything is hunky dory working well. There are known ramifications. So we use it with caution and we stay informed and we stay, we keep learning and advancing. Right, uh, I had a quiz, but I don't think I'll use that quiz now. There's a, I think there's a, there's a slide that we skipped somewhere. I'm not, I'm not seeing it. There's a slide. Okay, maybe I hadn't put it on a slide, but one of the dangers, it's probably implied here. Uh, I should have included. One of the dangers of AI particularly generative AI, is that it can do what is called hallucination. Take that down. Hallucination, where somewhere in the midst, no, I hadn't put it. I'm surprised. I thought I had included it in my slide. Hallucination is where, for some strange reason, it will generate content that doesn't make sense. And it could be in the midst of very, very uh, valid, very logical uh, text. And so hallucinations do okay. That is why whatever you generate, you must read, you must adapt it, you must correct it, you must make it relevant. Because remember, this is just general, taken from tons and tons of information out there. Right, at this point, I will pause and welcome any questions. I don't claim to be an authority or an expert, but I am a keen scholar of AI, and I'll try to the best of my ability to answer your questions. What I don't know, I'll be very honest with you. I'll tell you I don't know. What I need to find out, I'll tell you. I'll research on it and find out. But we'll just take the next five minutes. Uh, feel free to raise your hand and ask a question or to type your question in the chat, and I'll do my best to respond to it. Oof. I will rest at this point. It's over to you. You can type your, your, your question in the chat here in, um, uh, here in, uh, in Zoom. Or you can type in WhatsApp. I'll be checking the WhatsApp groups as well. So, right. Uh, AI for teachers. I've just checked there. No question as of now. Let me go to the LL4GE group for my Zambian colleagues. No question or comment in there. Yeah? And then let me get back to the chats in Zoom. Oh, really navigating all these things is kind of a nightmare. But I must say I'm, I'm rather enjoying it. Right. Um, any comment or question? Right. I'm looking at the chat. Uh, Sam says, interesting. And uh, somebody says, very clear. Uh, that's Yotase. Hey, Yotase. Good to see you. And uh, Techno says, I'm so excited about this presentation. That was wonderful, 100%. Thank you for the feedback. And Ralph says, chat GBT done. Well done, Ralph. I'm proud of you. Andrew says, great lesson. Can we arrange for another lesson another day? Yeah, yeah, we will do that. How do I access the material? Chris, Chris, what material? Everything is in the group. I posted everything, even the links. All you need to do is click on the link for ChatGPT, and voila, you are in ChatGPT, and then you track. Uh, Lucy says, interactive session. Thank you. I appreciate it. John says, you said earlier that GPT has been designed with American content. Is there any creation of African versions? There are, there are different countries have got different versions, but these are not fully fledged. And when, although I say American system, I was specifically referring to where I say grade three, it was looking at grade three in America. However, it has actually used data from all over the world. 
uh, but you'll find it's slightly based there. But if you check Google, there, there are versions of um, some of these um, the tools that tend to have data for, for specific countries. I know in Zimbabwe, there's sort of a little localized uh, uh, search engine that is based on, on, on uh, uh, one of these generative AI tools, but it's the limited functionality. But every single day, trust me, every single day new tools are coming up. You can't even keep up with this, but at least stay informed, right? Uh, John says, can we use to generate scheme of work? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, try it out. And you will tell me, absolutely. But maybe the format might differ depending on, on what you want to do, but you can. You can even ask, you know, give me, give me 10 activities for teaching the concept of such 10 interactive activities I can use in the classroom for teaching the concept of, and it will generate it for you. Can we use to generate? Yeah, that, that answer. That is a great breakthrough in our curricular management. Ah, welcome, Donga. And Daniel says, nice presentation. Keep it up. Thank you, Daniel. You're too kind. I really appreciate it. So listen, uh, I've got a favor to ask you, right? How is AI related to coding? Okay, AI can generate coding for you. It can generate. So they're somewhere predicting that in the short in the short period to come, in the not so distant future, maybe a significant number of programmers, of developers, software developers might be out of jobs because it does a brilliant job of generating perfect code. You can generate a program in an instant. All you need to do is learn how to write the correct prompt. But if you look online, there are so many sources that help you learn this. Uh, so... Uh, right, Sizzle says, wonderful first class, looking forward to more. Marvelous, splendid, that's techno. Uh, Mr. T, I joined in late. When is another session? Listen, Chris, we have recorded it. I will share the recording. Uh, I'll see when we can have another session, depending on the level of interest. I've really enjoyed the presentation. It has been so educative. Uh, that's DRSCC, Nalolo. Thanks for coming up with this presentation, Jonah. I appreciate it. How is AI related to coding? I answer that. Very educative. Thank you. Very enjoyable. I love it. God bless you abundantly. Thank you. I received. I need blessings at this point. Uh, and um, uh, Mange says, very interactive session. I've really enjoyed your presentation. Well done, Jonah. Thank you. I enjoyed the lesson. Very interactive. So here's the favor that I'm asking you to do. In fact, two favors. Uh, number one, I'm going to send you two links. And I'm kindly asking you to complete the links. Link number one is an evaluation of this session. And it's anonymous. Just about 12 questions. Please, 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 I beg you. I need this feedback. This is what will encourage me to do more of this. Link number two are your contact details. You put in your name, your phone number, uh, your mobile number for WhatsApp, and your email address. So that will keep you on my mailing list. And I can continue to share these things with you whenever, whenever they come out. Are we together? So those are the two links I'm sending you. The first one I'm sending you is for the evaluation. I am posting it in three places. One. I'm posting it, and I've just done that in this chat. Number two, I am posting it in uh, in WhatsApp. Please, please complete that evaluation. I beg you. I need your feedback. Right. So number three is uh, the one for registration, which I'll be posting just now once I once I sort it out. Um, I've been doing a lot of talking. If anybody feels like talking or sharing something verbally, please unmute and talk. I want to be quiet for a moment. I'm getting tired of hearing my own voice. So anybody who's got anything to share verbally, unmute and speak. Please feel free to do that. Somebody is unmuted, but they're not speaking. Hello, Jonah. Hello. Yes, uh, Chris here. I've joined this meeting for the first time. So okay. I wanted to find out uh, uh, which group are you sharing the recording? Is it uh, the one that you had with us at uh, Larson Brew, or you have a different group which I can join as well? Okay, right now, all I'm I'm going to be sharing it in the group that was formed by the colleagues from Kenya, which is AI. I think it's called AI for Teachers, where I posted the link to this um, uh, to this session. AI for Teachers. And uh, Dr. Sam Marigat is the one who created that group. And I'm also posting it in the Zambian group called LL4GE. I've been running a training in Zambia right now. We've just, uh, we've just been. Sure. 
you got the proof, good guy, but if you want to make sure you stay connected, there's the form I'm going to be sending. At the moment, uh, sorry, let me mute everybody's microphone. I've just uh, right. I tried to mute. Is it muted? Yes, I've just muted everyone's microphone. There was some feedback that was coming through. So the second link I'll be posting in these WhatsApp groups that I mentioned, uh, as well as in the chat, is uh, the, the one to do with uh, uh, your details. So if you just give me your details uh, so that we stay connected. And I, I'm looking at the number of things that I'm working on. Uh, I, I, I have an organization in Zimbabwe called uh, um, Skills, um, Skills Africa. And through that organization, we're actually looking at developing a program uh, that will provide certification uh, for AI training for teachers so that it's structured, it's proper. And, and, and so this is something that we're looking at doing within the next three months. And, and if you are in touch uh, through the, the link I'm, I'm sending, uh, then we can, we can continue and we will let you know as things go by uh, what, what we'll be doing. I hope I've answered your question. If you want to follow up, just unmute and speak. I've muted everybody because there was somebody whose mic was open and it was causing terrible feedback. Dr. Sam Marigat, please unmute, say something. You made this happen. I would really be interested in hearing your comments on uh, what we have done so far today. Yeah, yeah. Thank, uh, thank you so much, John. Thank you, team, um, team Kenya, team Zimbabwe. I think it's been a great opportunity. Uh, when we had, uh, when we met last, I think last month in in Machakos, mm. you you threw the challenge and say, I think I want to do something free on AI. And so when I met my colleagues here in uh, in Kisumu, I asked them anybody would be interested to join in, and uh, and it's been exciting. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, you've done a great job. And uh, let's 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 see where we can get to this. I think it's very exciting, and uh, it whets our appetite, so that from there we can see what what more we can do. Because there's actually a lot of opportunity listening to you on this. Uh, I have I've been trying to do a bit of it, but I think now you've opened my eyes more. And uh, I want to say thank you, and uh, you, Jonah, kudos. You never disappoint. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I'm most grateful. Yeah, I really appreciate. Um, Okay, let me see. All right, I think for now, that's it. Uh, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate... Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I gave you a wrong link. Ah. All right, the link that I gave you for staying in contact, I think I gave you a wrong one. Just give me a moment, please. Let me, let me get the correct one. I've been opening too many windows at the same time. Um, uh, let's see, just give me a moment. I will extract the correct one and send it to you. Actually, I don't have to do it online. I will send it in the WhatsApp group, okay? Uh, I won't take any more of your time. Thanks, everybody. Uh, have a good night, and uh, we will continue to communicate. Please enter your details once I, I send you the right link uh, for connecting, and we'll stay in touch. Goodbye. God bless you. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. How are you, Dr. Marigard? Maureen here. Nice. Hey, hi, hi. You, 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 you didn't tell me that you are here. I was a silent listener. Oh, great, great. Yeah, great, great, great to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, 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 great. We, we, we need to catch up soon. We will. <laughs> and, 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 okay, and bye. Yeah, okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. All right. Goodbye, everyone. I'm ending the meeting. Goodbye. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. You're welcome. Bye now.